Yo, what's poppin' guys? Today we're going to go over a very basic tutorial because I think a lot of the people coming to the channel or a lot of people looking up tutorials on Scratch are beginners, right? And I think that with all these beginners who are looking up tutorials, there should be some fairly easy tutorials for them to start off on and a bunch of tutorials for them to begin with to start their programming journey. So I thought today I'd do a very basic tutorial. Today I'm going to run over how to create a Pong game. Uh, if you don't know what Pong is, uh, you're lying. <laughs> but uh, Pong is the game where you have two little uh, rectangles and they move up and down and a ball goes back and forth between them. And if uh, you ever can't hit the ball, the other team gets a point. Uh, Coach, if you could put up an example on screen while I was, ex while I was explaining it there to show them what Pong is, uh, that's what we're going to be creating today. So I'm going to start it off by calling this Pong tutorial. Again, you call it whatever you want. I'm not going to make a title screen. So we're going to start by deleting the cat because nobody likes it. And now for a backdrop, I'm just going to change it to a slightly darker gray. Just because I think looking at white can kind of hurt. So there we go. And now we're going to start off by creating a sprite. And now you can open up to something like this. And what we're going to do is we're going to design what our paddle is going to look like. I'll go a dark gray outline with a lighter gray inside. Okay. I'll make this little paddle. I think that's that's a decent size. Yeah, I think I might go a little bit smaller in this department. Yeah, that looks nice. And then you're going to want to center it. You can center it by clicking on this mouse icon up here clicking on the object and you'll see this little crosshair if you drag that crosshair to the middle right here it'll lock itself into place and that is in the center you're going to want to make sure it's centered we will call this sprite paddle one you can call it whatever you'd like though it's not very important now what we're going to do is come to our events tab drag out the when green flag is clicked i will zoom in so you can see a little bit better so when the green flag is clicked we will set where we want it to go I'm going to have it go to negative 202, or let's do negative 200, negative 200, zero Y. You'll see that that will put it right here. You can test it just by clicking on it. See if I were to place it over here and run this piece of code, it put it where it's supposed to be. So good. So that's what it'll start when the green flag is clicked. And again, you can test this by moving it and pushing on the green flag and you'll see that the paddle moves over there. Now what we're going to do is set up movement. Come to our control panel and grab a forever loop and put it underneath what we already have created. And now grab yourself an if statement and we'll just set it outside for now. Come down to the sensing tab and pull out the key space press and put it inside of the if then bracket. You're going to set this to WASD up down. It doesn't matter. I will do W because maybe I want the players to be able to uh, two player game. One person uses WASD, the other person uses up and down arrows. What we're going to do is we're going to come to motion and we are going to change y by five so on an axis up and down is the y axis and left and right is the x axis so when we press up we want the paddle to move upwards so we want to change y because we're changing up and down and the farther up you go, the positive the number gets, the farther down you go, the more negative the number gets. And on the x-axis, the more left you go, the more negative number that gets, the more negative the number gets, and the farther right you go, the more positive the number gets. So by changing y by 5, it will move up. We're going to duplicate this, and I'm going to place it right underneath, and we'll change w to s, and change 5 to negative 5 to make it go down. And we'll put it in the code. Now when we run the game, you'll see that it that the code that we have is now always being lit up and that is because there is a forever loop constantly controlling it. Now if I press W the paddle will go up and then when I press S it comes back down. There we go we have a basic movement system for your paddle. You see they can only move on the up down axis or the Y axis. Now what we'll do is we will duplicate this paddle and it'll keep a paddle too. Only thing we'll change is change the X from negative 200 to 200 to put it on the exact opposite side of the plane. We'll still keep the Y at zero. That'll put both things here. Now I haven't changed the keys yet, so when I press W, they'll both go up and S will make them both go down. So what we will do is we will change W 
to the up arrow and S to the down arrow. Now you'll see when we run the game, W will make this will make the left one go up and down, and the arrow keys will make the right one go down. And you'll see that I can operate these at the same time with no problems. Great. Now let's set up the ball. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab this and we're going to call it ball. And now we will create ourselves a ball. I will make it the same color as the paddles. Make sure to center it just as you centered the other ones. And I think that's a fairly good size. So what we will do is when the green flag is clicked, again we are in our ball sprite at the moment. We will have the ball go to 0, 0. Now 0, 0 is the exact center of the screen. Perfect. Then what we will do is we will do wait 3 seconds. Then we will come to motion and we need to be able to set a direction. So we will grab point in direction. Okay. And then what we will do is we will pick random 0 through 360. This will change its direction to point anywhere that it can because in a circle there is 360 degrees of motion. So by setting our pick random to 0 to 36, it will change its direction from 0 to 36. To prove this, I will put a line coming outwards so you can see which direction it is facing and as I click this block you will see the uh, line will start to face in other directions. As you see, as I click the button, the arrow face, the line will face in a bunch of different directions. I'm going to get rid of that line now. So it'll point in a random direction, and then we will grab a forever loop in our control panel and put it right underneath. Inside of this forever loop, we are going to want to grab motion. And now, since we have it pointed in the direction that we have it needing to go, we won't need to change X or Y, we can just grab the movement. And we will do movement by 6. Slightly faster than the paddles can move, so that there is actually a chance to lose. Actually, you know what? I'll do 7. Now what we're going to want to do is come down and grab and if statement and put it right underneath the 7. Inside of this if statement, we are going to check if touching, so we'll grab an or, come to our sensing, and grab touching at the way top. If touching paddle 1, okay, let's, let's start with paddle 1. If touching paddle 1, which if you remember is this one over here, that implies that it is traveling in a negative x direction. So what we will do is we will point in direction, what we will do now is we will grab an addition, okay, and we will come to motion, grab a direction, so our current direction, and we will add, pick random, 180, because 180 will completely flip the object around, because let's say it's facing 90 degrees. 180 will flip it the exact opposite direction. So we want it to at least turn the other way. You know what? Let's actually give it a bit of leeway. So we'll go 150 to 220. Perfect. Actually, yeah. If touching paddle or touching paddle 2. That will actually work just fine. So what we'll do is you'll come to motion grab the if on edge bounce, put it right underneath our if statements. Okay, let's take a look again. The game is played, here, com here it comes. It bounces off the walls, and then when it touches a paddle, it will bounce off the paddle. Fantastic. Now, what we will set up is a way to lose the game. So, how are we going to do this? We'll create a new sprite, and we will call it Barrier. I will make this sprite 
just a red box. Fairly skinny red box that'll travel the entire length of the screen. Again, make sure that you center it. So, what I want it to do is come to the side of the screen, just like this. So, in Barrier, we will, when the green flag clicked, go to, and we will set this Y to zero, that can stay negative 237. Also, this should be Barrier 1. Alright, now what we will check is, uh, we will set, well we will first of all show it, don't forget to show it, and we will set the ghost effect to 100. What this will do is it will seem like it is hidden, however since it is showing it is still technically there. If you were to hide it, it would not be able to be interacted with. So we will set the ghost effect to 100. Then what we will do is come to control, grab a forever loop, check if it's touching the ball. Okay, If barrier 1 is touching the ball, we need to change player 2's score. So we'll come to variables and we will create a new variable. And we will call this player1. And hit OK. We'll make another variable and we'll call it player2 and hit OK. Player 1 will be on this side, and player 2 will be on this side. So, what we'll do is when the green flag is clicked, well, we'll do this in backdrops. Come to backdrops, events, when the green flag is clicked, we will set both player 1 to 0 and player 2 to 0. Great. Now come back to barrier 1. Inside of barrier 1, what will happen is if it's touching the ball, we will instantly hide the barrier so it can no longer be interacted with and we will change player 2 since player 1 got hit player 2 will get its point we will change player 2 by 1 and then wait one second and then show the barrier again as far as the ball goes what we will do is we will have to check if it is touching the barrier 1 so we will check if Touching barrier one, go to zero zero. Okay, perfect. Go to zero zero, and we'll have it wait three seconds. Now, what we'll do is we will duplicate our barrier one for a barrier two. The only thing that we are going to change is up here, our negative 237 will be switched to a positive 237. All the stay will same. All the all of it will stay the same, except for when we come to change player two. Change that to change player one. Then come back to our ball. Come into our operators. Grab an or statement. Put touching barrier one inside. Duplicate it to the other side and change barrier one to barrier two. Then place the or statement back inside of your if statement. Now you will see when we run our game. The ball will sit, and we can play the game. The balls will bounce off the paddles. And when a ball touches the wall, okay, it did not change. Now we have to figure out why. So, if barrier two is touching the ball, then we will change player one by one. Hmm, why isn't this working? Ah, there was a very simple fix. All we need to do is come to our ball sprite and put a wait 0.01 .01 seconds before it goes to x0 and y0. The reason for this being is, the second that the ball touches our barrier, it will instantly come back to 0, 0 giving the barriers no time to hide and then change the player. So, now that we've set that up, when we start the game, the ball will move in 3 seconds, and we can start playing Pong. But if the ball touches the wall, Player 2 got a point. Now let's see if we can get player 2 to lose. Player 1 gets a point. And there we go. Now we have a working system with scoring. Now let's set up a win system. What we will do 
is we will come to our backdrops and we will grab looks and put switch backdrop to backdrop one underneath our green flag. We will also rename backdrop one to playfield. We're going to create a new backdrop. I'm going to just copy this gray background and we will put some dark gray text on screen saying player one wins and then we will duplicate this and change it to say player two wins we will change this player one wins to p1 wins and change the other backdrop to p2 wins now when the green flag is clicked the backdrop will be switched to playfield we will run a code saying well no let's actually come to ball underneath our if statement here we will then check well no come to come to your barrier i'm sorry so after the player is changed what we will do is we will check if come to operators grab an equals and put it inside of your if statement since player 2 is being changed what we'll do immediately after is check if player 2 is equal to 6 let's have 6 be our win number after reaching a score of 6 you will win you can change this number to whatever you'd like so player 2 equals 6 if it if that happens to be the case we'll come to events and we will run a broadcast called we will make a new broadcast called player two wins we will put this right in right underneath our change player two i'm going to duplicate this and take off the one second in the show and i'm going to drag it over to barrier two and let go you cannot get rid of this when you come to barrier two it will be here we're going to change player two to player one and change this blog broadcast to player one wins and again we will put this right underneath our change player i don't know what happened to the hide but i'll put it back now we will come to our backdrop and grab when i receive player one wins we will switch the backdrop to p1 wins you can duplicate this change the broadcast to player two wins to p2 wins great now what we will do is straight afterwards we will come down to control grab a stop all and put it right underneath both of these strings now we will come to our paddle come to events grab one i receive player one wins hide and then don't forget when the green flag is clicked to show drag this player one wins to paddle two the ball and the barriers don't matter since they're invisible now come to paddle 2 and make sure you show when the green flag is clicked same with the ball duplicate this player 1 wins and do it for player 2 on each of the sprites that have it and there you go now what that has done is made a system that can make a player win. Let's make player 2 win. So in order to make player 2 win, they have to get 6 points. So let's let them win. Player 2 is at their second point. Ooh. Their third. I don't know why I let him win there. Four. Five. And six. And then it says that player two wins. Ooh, I know why these are showing. So since it stops the script, the ghost effect of the two bars will no longer be set to 100. So we will take this player one wins and put this in barrier one and barrier two along with the others along with player two and since our barriers already show we don't have to worry about that and that'll fix it 
Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you liked it, then like it. If you didn't like it, like it anyways, because uh, I think I might start doing some more basic, easy tutorials like this in the future. I think they're fun, easy to get new people to learn how to code, and yeah. Thank you so much for watching. Join Discord link in the description. Subscribe to my DK Galaxy channel, my gaming channel link in the description, and subscribe to Spellbell on TCG, my card game channel where I talk about the card game I've created, how you can buy it, stuff like that. Bunch of interesting stuff. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you to Coach for being our editor, and I will see you in the next one. Peace.